I'm Pepe Sepulveda and I work at the KUNUS uh, Cute Center. And I'm really delighted to be here tonight with all of you. We just had a fantastic talk by Margarita that talked about all the good things that can happen with communication technologies. And I want to talk about other things that can happen with communication technologies, like this one that doesn't work. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> we work on communication. We're, what we want to do is transform the way that we communicate. So we are trying to get this group of people that are coming out with ideas to transform communication. Communication technologies today are really uh, verbal and uh, we just have text and, and talking, but we are trying to look for different ways that uh, engage other, other senses. So uh, how does that fit with our world today? We live in this super connected world where basically we can be anywhere and everywhere at all times and all the time. So this is, this is wonderful, okay? But there are some flaws. And uh, it's wonderful because a few years ago, all these technologies were not available to uh, most of the people. And today, anyone can uh, be here and be connected to the other side of the world. Yes, there have video conversation and everything. All these technologies, a few years ago, were just for a few, like Batman, James Bond, and, <laughs> and a couple more. So what happens with these technologies? We receive more email that, than we want. We write less email than we have to. We post blogs, we tweet, we update our status in, in Facebook, we post a picture in Flickr. But if you look at all these technologies, we are just doing one thing. We are putting a piece of information in one box. This box is taking the information and is multiplying the information and sending it to other people. These other people are taking this information from the box, transforming it a little bit. We could say that we are, they are mutating this information and putting it in another box that does the same. So who does this? Viruses do this. Virus infects a cell, reproduces, and then moves to the next one. So what if information is just using human beings to survive? What if our, all our coolness, all our super friends in Facebook, all our fans, all our uh, followers in Twitter are just our imagination? <laughs> so let's, let's think about this. What happens? when we are being used by information. We are just basing communication of pushing information. We're just pushing, 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 but we are not an active part of this information. So we are looking about uh, new ways of communication. Communication doesn't have to be uh, pushing messages. I can communicate with other people, just, doing, just being by, with them and doing other things. So one of the things that we have been looking at is getting uh, different generations together. So we have created this huge uh, game board where we get uh, children and old people to play together. And also parents can attend to the game and via uh, their computer when they are working. So what we use is we use uh, some RFID slippers. That sounds really cool. <laughs> and uh, the kids play in this board. And the problem was that to get kids to play with uh, their grandparents, kids love video games, grandparents don't have the dexterity to control the video game controllers. But they can control their body and they can work together. And also the parents can be in that game from a distance. So where do we get all these ideas? Where all this wackiness comes from? Well, it's really easy. You just get a group of crazy people. <laughs> Uh, what I just came out with this word that I think define well uh, the group and just tell them to think about new ideas, but tell them not to focus on mainstream research. If all the people is looking in this direction and the asteroid is coming in from that direction, we are really screwed. And if we look at history, we see that across history, People that were looking in the other direction 
discover a lot of interesting things. Look at Christopher Columbus. All the people who's looking in this direction, he looked in the other, and he found a, a new planet. So we get all these people together, and we just tell them, we just ask them a question. And we, we tell them, yes, think about this. And this is what in a normal place would be called a meeting, but we, it's more like a gathering around a question. So we get uh, all the people, and some people might come with a soldering gun, some people might come with oil paintings or a poetry book, and they just come out with ideas. And we think that this is good because it's good that young people are able to explore themselves as different. There is more and more people with degrees today. There is more and more people doing the same thing. So I think it's really good that people start exploring their different sides and make something out of that. So doing something different from mainstream research, we have discovered this. Mainstream research is just doing this. It's like we want to uh, embed a message in a fabric and we just do it light and flashy and really in your face. But what we have done is created a ambicraft, which is a, a textile that changes color. We uh, use thermochromic ink, that is an ink that changes color with temperature, so we have created some hardware that changes the temperature of the fabric really fast. And we can put a subtle message, so we can have, for example, this tablecloth where you see this bird flying around, and it's not the flashy thing in your face, and it's more uh, for a more relaxed way of communication. But we still have to deal with humans. And humans today are overusing interfaces. We have created interfaces. We have created a, a big cell around us, really hard, that uh, is keeping us from communicating with other people and communicating with the environment. What do I mean by this? How many people here <laughs> write an email to a person that is in the next office? How many people here <laughs> will chat with their computer with someone that they can see from their place that they are chatting. We, are, we have created this because we don't want to walk to the person and talk with them. Even more, how many people here have called someone and really wish that they don't pick the phone and they can leave a message in the machine? <laughs> and you are, you are calling and you are thinking, please, 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 don't, don't beat it up. And then when, when you get the machine, you say, hey, I really have been trying to get you. <laughs> but, you know, we are all busy, so we will see us in, uh, we'll see at some point. And then you just turn off the phone because, I mean, there is retaliation. <laughs> so you don't want to. So this is, this, all this cell is keeping us from communicating to other people. And another thing that is happening is that we are not communicating with our environment. Wake up in the morning, we take the phone, and we say, okay, it's raining. We take an umbrella, but we don't go to the window, open the window and say, hey, it's raining. <laughs> we have all the information that comes from the outside has to go through our device. And this is, this is something that we have to, to, to understand. And it's important that we, we understand this because then we can see how can we make devices that are more human. We have seen that uh, people are, have a more emphatic way of communicating with uh, natural things than with artificial things. So we have created a natural, <laughs> a natural device for communication. We have taken a cabbage that can change colors. So by changing the pH of the liquid that surrounds this, this cabbage, we can change the color of the cabbage. So we, we time this uh, change of colors with the information that we want to display. So we can display information about the, the weather. We can display the information about the air pollution, a stock market, or, or whatever. We just have to change the color of the cabbage. And since this is uh, a natural living organism, we have a more em emphatic uh, relationship with it. And also, we are exploring this. I'm going to let you listen. 
if this sound comes on, doesn't come on. liquid interface what we have done is created uh, a way to interact with a computer through a liquid so right now we have a uh, tablet computers and we have touch screens so we touch and move and and click and we can do all this in in a flat surface but in this flat surface we cannot pull we cannot we cannot move we cannot grab anything and uh, humans have a more natural uh, way to do things of I mean, all the things that we do in, in life is not by touching a surface, but by manipulating an object. So we have uh, done some research on using different uh, materials to interface with a computer, and this is, this is one. Basically, what we do is use uh, ferromagnetic uh, fluid and uh, excitate this fluid with, with a magnet depending on where do we have our hands. So we can pull the liquid, we can manipulate the, the liquid, and the liquid will stay there. And it's, as you have seen, really beautiful. So another problem that uh, technology has, is not, not a problem, I mean, this, these are things that are not problems, are things that, that happen and uh, are directions that we should look into to make them better. So we have uh, more people now that uh, feel alone stressed and depressed. Even though we are in this super communication uh, era where we can talk with everyone and we can communicate and we can share experiences and do all these things, there's a lot of people that are alone at home and they, don't, they cannot communicate with anyone and they are depressed. There's people that uh, uh, too much information overwhelms them and, and get a stress. So we have looked into this and we are developing technologies to see how can we ease the life by using uh, communication technologies. So one of these technologies is our Hagi pyjamas. So this Hagi pyjamas is a way of communicating hugs. So we use, a, we use haptics to send a hug. So I know that some of you are thinking, well, this is the creepiest thing that I have ever, <laughs> ever had. This is so sad that someone has, needs a, a machine to give a hug, but we are, we consider, uh, everybody considers themselves a normal person. But just think about people that have a, a terminal disease and for some medical reason cannot touch or be touched. Or think someone that uh, is serving a sentence in jail and they are serving this sentence and they still want to, to care for the loving ones. So we have uh, produced this, and this basically is basically a jacket that uh, you, you put on and will inflate. So when I, I will have this device, and with this device I will press different buttons to simulate the, the hug, and the, the other person in another place will receive this, <laughs> this, this hug. And another uh, thing that we are looking at is how do we communicate with, with food? Food is a very uh, natural thing. We all eat and we all communicate while we are eating. So what we are doing is doing this series of devices that uh, allow us to make cooking and eating a more meaningful experience. So we have all these technologies that we use, like uh, we have a, um, a Wi-Fi pan that you can use and when you are cooking, someone in the other side of the world can follow your receipt and can see and can adjust and help you uh, co-cook. We have uh, musical chopsticks. We have a, a thing that we can pass some food to someone that is in another country. We can move things in the table of the other person. And this is something that we uh, finished yesterday and it's a food teleportation system is food teleportation, but it's a food printer. <laughs> so what we do is, is print messages with food. And the particularity of this is that we can 
mm, we basically design a, a little cake. And this little cake, we design it in layers. So as you eat this cake, the story develops. And it's as if you were uh, flipping the pages of a book. So you take a bite, and then you see a different thing. You take another bite and see a, another thing. So basically, uh, this is all that I'm going to say. And I think we should, in the future, in technology and communication, we should look into a different direction. Because it's really difficult for us as human, because we are human, or at least we look like human, uh, to see ourselves from the outside. So we see ourselves from the inside. We are really happy, but maybe we are in denial. So it would be good from, to observe ourselves from the outside. And that's why we get all these people looking in many different directions. So to transform communications, I just think that we just have to think about ideas and just jump into them and hope for the best. So thank you. <laughs>